Apple and Google have finally launched their new devices and in doing so have finally released their new chipsets, which we will be comparing against some of the best flagship CPUs around in three benchmark runs where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling, score, and frames per second. When it comes to battery capacity, the Pixel and Samsung have the largest cells, followed by the Xiaomi, and the smallest batteries here are found inside the iPhones. All five devices have been updated to their latest available stable software updates. The iPhones and Pixel have two main CPU cores, while the Samsung and Xiaomi utilize just one main core. The iPhone 14 Pro Max has the highest core clock speed, while the Pixel 7 Pro has the lowest. The iPhone 13 Pro Max uses LPDDR4 XRAM modules, while its successor as well as the three Android phones are rocking newer, faster LPDDR5 RAM. All phones house 120Hz LTPO displays, and all of them are set to their native screen resolution. Neither iPhone has a performance mode option, the Pixel runs at max performance with adaptive battery disabled, and the Samsung and Xiaomi are both set to their respective high performance modes. Today we'll be running through the latest version of Antutu, Geekbench, and 3DMark, and between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. How much better is the new 4 nanometer run iPhone 14 Pro Max as opposed to its predecessor in terms of performance? And can the Pixel 7 Pro keep up with some of the best Android chipsets around? This is Tech Neck, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, it's worth checking out the battery percentage on each phone. Don't worry too much about the differences in battery percentage at the moment that you see on screen. We're just gonna be comparing the drain at the end to see which one had a higher milliamp hour per minute drain reading. Room temperature, we're sitting at around 21.9 degrees in Celsius. Once again, don't worry too much about the device temperature right now. I have had the AC on prior to this test for a few hours, so they're all sitting at pretty much the same room temperature. We kick starting things off with Antutu here, but there seems to be a bit of an issue with the Pixel 7 Pro and Android 13, that is. Whenever you start it, it goes to a blank black screen. The only way to get around this is to lock the phone, unlock it, and then switch to the Antutu 3D test back to that. and. The only way that I could get all of them starting at the same time was to do that on the Pixel first and then kickstart the rest of them. So like I was mentioning before, the temperatures you can't really take into account at the moment at the start. It's more so about how much they gain throughout the test. Of course, you're gonna be checking the temperatures between each benchmark. So first, and two, two, then we'll check the temperature as you can see at the bottom of the screen, then Geekbench, then we'll check the temp, and then 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, and then we'll check the temp again. And between each one, we'll see the gain of temp and which one is gaining the most, and if there is a potential for throttling over there, and just to check the overall heat dissipation readings on all of these devices. The Pixel 7 Pro did that same thing again where it went to a black screen, I had to lock and unlock. It only did it twice in the test though and it didn't do it again. So I guess there is hope. I hope that they do fix this going forward, but that little workaround did tend to work out there. At the start of Antutu version nine, we had Swordsman, which is new from version eight compared to that. Then we had Refinery, which is the same. And then we moved on to Terracotta Soldiers, which is seen on screen right now. This is my favorite part of the test. You can see the Pixel is really struggling in terms of choppiness compared to the other Android devices, let alone the iPhone devices on the left-hand side, which are buttery smooth. It is a little bit choppy most of the time throughout Antutu, and you'll notice later in 3D Mark Wildlife, it happens again. Now we're on the scrolling section of Antutu, and like I mentioned earlier, all of them have LTPO panels, but what I didn't mention is that the iPhone 14 Pro Max, S22 Ultra, and Xiaomi 12S Ultra have LTPO 2.0 displays, meaning that they can refresh between one and 120 hertz, which is actually more efficient in terms of battery life, whereas the iPhone 13 Pro Max and Pixel 7 Pro, even though the Pixel 7 Pro just released, they can only refresh between 10 and 120 hertz because they are LTPO 1.0 displays. Now, when we measure temps at the end of each test, I measure them as soon as the phone finishes the test. So I don't wait until all of them are done with the test because then it gives the other devices a chance to cool down and the one that finishes later on will be the hottest. So in terms of accuracy, I just checked the temperature in degrees Celsius of the four phones that are done. The Pixel 7 Pro, of course, lagging behind over here because of all of its issues. And in terms of temperature now, we actually have the coolest one being the 13 Pro Max and the hottest being the S22 Ultra. But the most gain was the Xiaomi 12S Ultra with 13.8 degrees in Celsius, as opposed to the least gain Pixel 7 Pro with only adding 10.1 degrees in Celsius. Now we are moving on to Geekbench version five on all devices here. And while you can compare Androids with 
iPhones in terms of Geekbench, you can't really do so in Antutu, which we ran before because they use different APIs. That being OpenCLGL and Vulkan on the Androids as opposed to Metal API that you see on the iPhone devices. But I mean, you can't help but compare iPhones to Androids. I mean, that's what the biggest battle of the smartphone industry is all about. And Antutu version nine has actually been a lot more optimized for iOS and for iPhones as opposed to previous and Tutu versions. And now moving on to 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme here, making sure that all of them are not set to unlimited, so they're all on screen, not off screen. We're doing Wildlife Extreme this time around because the regular wildlife test is actually too little of a performance check for most devices here, and they usually hit max FPS and max score on all of them. And the iPhones with the regular one is capped at 60 FPS, so it's a bit unfair. So to keep things fair over here, we're running Extreme, which is the same as regular wildlife, but rendering at 4K, so it's a little bit more demanding. As you can see, the Pixel 7 Pro is really struggling here. Very, very stuttery, as opposed to the two Android phones on the right-hand side and the two iPhones on the left-hand side. Though the Android phones on the right-hand side tend to finish this test a little bit quicker than the iPhone since the iPhones took quite a while to actually get to the initial start of the test. So when it comes to temperature at the end of Geekbench, the hottest gain was on the Pixel 7 Pro, adding 1.9 degrees in Celsius. And after 3D Mark Wildlife, the hottest gain this time around, adding 2.7 degrees Celsius, was the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And weirdly enough, the coolest gain, or the lesser gain, was the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, only adding 0.5 degrees in Celsius. Now, when it comes to overall temperatures from start to finish, of course, the iPhones added the exact same degrees in Celsius gain throughout the test because they started with the same and ended with the same temp, adding in 14.3 degrees in Celsius. That's not exactly the least gain out of all these devices. The lowest was actually the Pixel 7 Pro with 13.2 degrees in Celsius added, which is still a fair share, but it's not as much as the hottest here, adding a whopping 14.9 degrees in Celsius on the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. Now, one thing that Google have done right with the new Pixel 7 Pro is the fact that they have improved battery by a lot. The size is pretty much the same as its predecessor at 5,000 milliamp hours, but it drained the least in terms of percentage and the lowest milliamp hour per minute reading compared to all the devices over here. That being a 6% drain and a 15.79 milliamp hour per minute. The rest of them are all pretty similar, but the worst one was oddly the iPhone 13 Pro Max with a 9% drain and a 20.62 milliamp hour per minute drain rating. Now, before we get into the actual results, the scores starting with Antutu ending off with 3D Mark Wildlife, I just wanted to mention that what Google have done this time around is not focus on hardware, they focused on software. And while while software is absolutely amazing on Pixel devices since it runs stock Android, optimizations have been eh, so-so. But optimizations this year are on point. They're actually creeping up to what we've seen from Apple devices, and that is perfect harmony in terms of optimizations, optimizing hardware with software, which is fantastic. Now, you will notice that in day-to-day -day situations, just scrolling through your phone, switching between apps, it's gonna feel faster probably than some of the best Android flagship smartphones around, but numbers don't lie. And when you're running through benchmarks or playing high performing games, you are gonna notice a difference when hardware is lacking. And that is why the Pixel 7 Pro placed fifth in Antutu with 760,920 points. Fourth place was weirdly the iPhone 13 Pro Max with 813,965 points, but it is a device from last year. Then we have third place being the S22 Ultra. Then in second place, we have the 14 Pro Max, finally right at the top there with the best of the best when it comes to Antutu is an iPhone. The only phone that hit over a million this time around was the Xiaomi 12S Ultra with a million and 89,844 points, which is outright insane. If you want the best performing phone in terms of CPU and GPU performance, based on the Antutu results, you're gonna wanna pick up the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, but since it didn't release in the global market, you're gonna have to settle for other devices here. But honestly, the difference in Antutu between 900,000 and a million is not massive by any means. You're not really gonna notice much of a difference when playing high performance games. Now, when it comes to Geekbench, in terms of single core, first place, no doubt the iPhone 14 Pro Max with 1,889 points. 
Not far behind that, it's predecessor, the 13 Pro Max. Then we have third place, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, which is pretty far from the two iPhones. But even further than that is the Pixel 7 Pro with just over a thousand points. And weirdly enough, the Samsung with 776 points. Though last time out, it got 1,221 points in my recent speed test that I did, which means that either there's been some issue with software or there has been throttling within the benchmark test because Geekbench was run right after and 2.2 and the Samsung doesn't always overheat. It doesn't scream at you when it is overheating, but you know when it's down performing compared to the other devices. And when it comes to multi-core score, the placements are fairly similar. First and second place going toward the iPhone 14 and 13 Pro Max respectively. Then third is the Xiaomi. But the Pixel and the S22 Ultra placements have flipped around here now. Fourth being the Samsung with 3000 points as opposed to 2,796 points on the Pixel 7 Pro. Now, when it comes to integrated graphics, since none of these phones have individual dedicated graphics in their devices. They're integrated within the chip. We have Apple's five core graphics on both iPhone devices over here. Though the 14 Pro Max it does see a bump up in terms of 50% more memory bandwidth. When it comes to the Pixel 7 Pro, we're rocking the Mali G710 MP7 GPU. And then we have Adreno 730s on the Xiaomi and on the Samsung. Though the Xiaomi has a slight bump in terms of clock speed when it comes to GPU performance because of it being the overclocked Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset. And that pretty much translates into a 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme score, which rendered 4K of fifth place on the Pixel 7 Pro with 1,664 points and an average of 10 FPS, but not much better than that was fourth place S22 Ultra. Third place was the iPhone 13 Pro Max with an average of 15.1 FPS. Very impressed by the Xiaomi 12S Ultra over here, even though it's essentially just an overclocked chipset version of the S22 Ultra, or what's in it, that is. It got an average of 16.6 .6 FPS, putting the iPhone 13 Pro Max in the dust. And honestly, it's not that far off the crown king here, that being the 14 Pro Max with an average of 19.1 FPS when rendering literally a 4K benchmark, which is mad. So there you guys have it. Some impressive results from five of honestly the best devices that the planet has to offer. But just a couple thoughts here, the Pixel, added the least in terms of temperature gain throughout the test, staying the coolest. So things have pretty much turned around. I guess Xiaomi always adds the most and it did this time with the 12S Ultra. But in terms of battery life, the iPhone 13 Pro Max did the worst in terms of milliamp hour per minute drain and the Pixel this time did the best. I'm really impressed that Google have put so much focus and energy into battery optimizations for the new Pixel device, which is fantastic. That being said, the Pixel didn't really fare too well in terms of scores, because at the end of the day, the hardware that it has on paper just does not come close to the rest of the device's hardware over here. And it does show in benchmark results, because at the end of the day, numbers are numbers. But if there had to be a crowned king, it's gonna be the iPhone 14 Pro Max for this year in terms of gaming and benchmarks. And not far behind that, sometimes even above it, is the Xiaomi 12S Ultra because Qualcomm really did work some magic with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipsets, though they are still struggling in terms of heat and battery. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below of the results as well as all the other things tested within this video. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.